I grew up attending a moderate Presbyterian church. I was active in the youth group and for a while even sang in the choir. If you asked me, I would have told you I was a Christian. I had Jesus in my life. He was right there sitting on the top shelf of my closet with a sign that said, in case of emergency, pray. You see, I was interested in going to heaven, but I had no interest in Christ or the claim that he would make on my life. Now, I was a nice kid. I was fairly well liked by my fellow students and teachers, and I did well in school. I was president of the National Honor Society. I was voted most talented in my high school class, and I was considered a leader in my school. I played multiple st sports during my years in school. And in the community, I was one of those kids you could call if you needed your house taken care of while you were gone. I was just like so many other nice kids out there. For six days and 23 hours a week, I thought about myself and my fleshly desires. And God was something, and notice there that I said something, not someone, I considered on Sunday from 11 to noon but God was patient with me. I left for college and found that I was even more capable of taking care of myself. I did well in school, played water polo, was active on the local rescue squad, and cared less and less about God. God did bless me through a Christian named Doug who would be my roommate for all four years of college and introduced me to Sherry. While Doug says that during college, he wasn't exactly the best ambassador of Christ. He did provide a means for God to plant seeds. But I continued to rebel, and God was patient with me. I went to dental school, and at this point, at best, I'm a deist. I think I believed there was a God that he created, or at least started the creation of the universe. But I didn't think he had any influence or effect in the world, and especially in my life. My words were more coarse, my attitude more self-centered, and my behavior more destructive. I don't, want to go, I don't want to go into any specifics because I don't want to be tempted to boast in my sin, but let's just say that at this point I wasn't nice anymore. But God, and for that matter Sherry, were patient with me. I came to Charlottesville and started my career. Sherry and I got married two years later, and about two and a half years after that, Dalton was born. My focus was on being a great dentist, a good dad, and with what little time and energy I had left, a husband. I had absolutely no interest in God or the things of God, and why should I? I had accomplished everything I had ever set out to accomplish, and I had accomplished them well. Then God irresistibly called me to repentance. The date is easy to remember. September 11th, 2001. When the terrorists struck the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and that lonely field in Pennsylvania, I was struck with a sense of helplessness and loss like I'd never felt before. I watched those buildings collapse saw the people jumping from the upper floor windows to escape the fire, and the only thing I could think about was, what if I had been in that building? At that point, I realized I wasn't in control of my life the way I thought I was. My sin, my self-righteousness, my blasphemy, my opposition to God, all became visible to me as if someone had turned a light on in a darkened room. We soon started attending Jefferson Park, but my attendance was sporadic and God was patient with me. I finally professed faith in Christ and was baptized in September 2003 and have grown in knowledge and love of Christ. Since then, I have experienced a lot of ups and downs, periods of great spiritual growth and great spiritual turmoil. And God continues to this day to be patient with me. I'm up here this morning sharing my testimony with you, not because I'm glad the atrocities 
of 9-11 occurred. On the contrary, I hate the fact that this happened. But I'm standing here this morning as a testimony to God's patience with sinners and to give thanks to God for his using this evil to break my stony heart and bring me to repentance. Everyone here this morning needs to realize and be thankful for the patience God has shown you. Now before I finish, I, I need to take a moment and speak to anyone here this morning who's not a Christian. God's patience is great, but it's not eternal. God's wrath has been withheld by his patience, but it is building up like rushing waters behind a dam. And one day the floodgates will be opened and his wrath will be poured out upon the earth. Repent of your sins and put your trust in Christ. Don't misunderstand my testimony and think that you too have at least 38 years to, to become a Christian. There will come a time, and it may be very soon, or it could be years from now, when either Christ will return to earth to claim his final victory, or you will die. In either case, God's patience is over. All of us will stand before God in the end. You will stand there before the creator and sustainer of the universe alone as every sin, even sins you're not aware you've committed, are shown to you. When this indictment is completed, before God pronounces judgment and commits you to an eternity of pain and torment in the fires of hell, God will simply ask, why? And the simple fact is, you won't have an excuse. You've seen God's creation, which, as Paul states in Romans 1, testifies to who he is, and yet you didn't honor him. You're sitting here this morning hearing the gospel proclaimed, but you didn't put your faith in him. But for those of us in Christ, we won't need an excuse. As we stand trembling before the God of the universe, as the indictment against us is read, we won't be alone. Christ Jesus will stand there with us and proclaim to the Father that we need no excuse. He will say, this one is mine. I have already paid the penalty for his sins. You poured out your wrath on me when I was hanging on that cross so that this one could be spared. And we will enter paradise to praise and worship our God forever. Let me close with a simple question. What if it had been you in that building on September 11th, 2001?